Growers have quickly been adopting precision ag technologies for corn and soybean production. A somewhat dated USDA study released in October showed half of all corn farms used yield monitors in the sample year of 2010, about a third utilized auto steer systems, and more than a fifth used variable rate technology. All produced positive but small returns, notably GPS mapping increased net profits by almost 2 percent, and guidance systems returned a percent and a half. University of Nebraska-Lincoln researchers are studying an emerging precision ag tool, variable rate planting. Nebraska Extension's Joe Luck is part of a team looking at the use of this technology. We talked with him recently about how this may help growers in certain situations. Multi-hybrid planters are kind of a new technology, pretty much in the infancy stage right now. Um, what we're talking about with these planters, and there's a couple different manufacturers that have these options out there, is we're keeping two different hybrids or two different seed or products in different bulk tanks on the planter and then we're actually able to switch where those products or seeds get planted on the go in the field different management zones um, they're kept separately we have to develop prescription map for where those two different products go so if we're planting two different hybrids if we have uh, say a seed that's been treated for a certain um, problem and then non-treated we keep those separate and then we can actually change those on the go in the field why would a farmer want to use this technology? Well, you know, if, if a producer has fields that have a lot of variability in there, we know what the cause of that variability is. So one of the pro projects we looked at this year was drought tolerant corn placement versus maybe an offensive hybrid placement. If we know we have moisture variation, soil moisture variation in the field, we might try and place that drought tolerant hybrid on those areas of the field where we have less soil moisture. Um, and, and so it allows us to then optimize maybe where that seed would go to have the best chance for higher yields. Go farther into the research that you've done using this technology and specifically what you're looking for. Yeah, so in 2016 we kind of looked at two different things. One was the drought tolerant corn versus offensive hybrid placement. Um, another uh, application we looked at was seed treatment for soybeans, um, looking for treatments to uh, reduce the effects of sudden death syndrome in soybeans. So we actually looked at putting different zones in the field where we expect more pressure from SDS or we expected more pressure from uh, less rainfall than what we would like to have. And then we actually embedded within those zones uh, the, uh, the off treatment so we could kind of compare how the corn hybrids performed or how the soybean seed treated and not treated performed uh, ge geographically close to each other in those zones. Preliminary results? Well, uh, it was a rough year for drought tolerant corn studies. You know, we had, we probably had some fields that had 30 inches of rainfall during the growing season. Um, so there were a couple fields that we did see, you know, the drought tolerant hybrid outperformed in some areas of the field. But, um, you know, these are issues that everybody dealt with. Um, you know, it was kind of the, the typical, you know, we, we weren't hurting for rain this year for sure. Um, with the, the sudden death syndrome, the rainfall pressure did uh, actually increase probably some of the SDS symptoms we saw. So we did see some uh, locations of some fields were six bushels per acre soybeans higher with that treated seed. Um, other parts of the field were well, much less than that. So uh, we, we do see the potential for that subfield, that zone management within a field where you could potentially have you know, increased profitability from that. Can you explain a little bit more or go further into how advanced this technology is right now? Yeah, I mean, the, the technology really has only been out for a couple years. You know, probably the, the first experimental platform is probably in the last five years. So really, the, the systems are kind of in their infancy. You know, what we can say, you know, we were really fortunate. Uh, Kinsey Manufacturing loaned us a planner for the, the past growing season to, to work with. Um, as far as where it changed, you know, it, it did a very good job of following the prescription maps. Um, and. And, and there will be, I think, some limited release. Uh, the Precision Planning is another company that has an option. I think they're out there now uh, using those. So, but there's still a lot of research being done on, you know, how do we develop zones to optimize that, um, and that's really going to be critical for the future. Right. What would you say to the farmer who would be eager to use this? Yeah. If uh, you know, if you have a lot of variability. So again, go back to the corn. You know, drought tolerant versus off offensive. Um, if, if there's an opportunity to collect some historical data to start looking at, you know, what scenarios would this type of platform be economically beneficial? And so collecting that, that spatial yield history data is going to be a critical element. You know, how does that relate to other uh, environmental factors, terrain of the field, soil texture, you know, again, thinking back to that soil moisture variability. 
Um, and the other thing is if, if they can do some split planter studies, so maybe half their planter and one hybrid, half their planter with another hybrid, look at how those hybrids perform. You know, we do have some data from a drought year back in 2012 that did show uh, a drought tolerant hybrid optimally placed in a field versus a, uh, offensive hybrid, you know, could have been like a $25 per, uh, per acre payback. So the opportunities are there, it's just a matter of collecting that preliminary data to, to evaluate how much of an impact could you have. You can learn more about available and emerging precision ag tools at the Nebraska Ag Technologies Association Conference in Lincoln on February 1st and 2nd. We'll link to more information about that event on the Market Journal homepage.